Hello, this is Dave Hearn uh, with episode 12 of the Photo Geezers. Today, we're very lucky to have Tom and Sam Maynard with us who are going to uh, talk about some of their travels and the photos they've taken and, and the uh, perspective by, from which they take those photos. Uh, both Dick and I, and as we've gone through Photo Club in the last several months, We've always been impressed with Tom and Sam's travel photography, and we invited them on as guests. So, Dick, I don't know whether you have anything you want to add or? Uh, only that uh, this will not be a how to do it type video that we often do or try to do. Uh, it's really more just to ex explore the subject. And if we, out of that, we see needs for any how to do it or tips, we'll do that in a, in a follow-up program in a couple of weeks. So with that, uh, Tom, I'm going to invite you to share your screen and uh, take us through. Um, first, a disclaimer. We're not photographic artists. We're just amateurs um, who like to take pictures to remember our trips and to share with our family and friends. But we didn't include any family pictures. Um, we will jump around geographically. Um, we have traveled around the United States, in fact, camped around the United States, um, but we've included only um, other places around the world. We've learned a lot through this process. Um, Dave and Dick have helped us um, identify themes of what we're interested in and how we're similar and how we're different, and we'll share that with you. Um, go ahead. Well, we're going to start by showing uh, just a couple of pictures which are not uh, fine photography. In fact, the point is they're not. Uh, in 1971, Samantha and I went to the Soviet Union for a two-week tour, which was fascinating. There were many interesting things to see, many things to photograph. Uh, in those days, we were using uh, film and we were very worried about running out. So. We didn't take multiple pictures of everything as we do now. This was a picture of uh, a couple who uh, had visited Red Square that just after they were married with their entourage and they were on their way to Lenin's tomb, which was a cultural thing to do there at the time. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the, the colors are washed out, it's overexposed. I didn't get the bride in the picture very well. Um, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not great photography. Uh, from there, we traveled all over the Soviet Union. We ended up in Uzbekistan. Uh, this was a picture of a, a famous mosque there. The mosaic work was very colorful and beautiful. Uh, it's a dreadful picture. Uh, it was uh, high noon. The light was uh, terrible. It was 113 degrees. Um, and I, we didn't work too hard to get a better perspective. Here's another overexposed picture, but this was Siberia. And it was fascinating to see this place and uh, the very different uh, landscape there from the rest of the Soviet Union. Uh, and this was a woman walking up the street. Again, overexposed, blurry. Um, Not a very good subject matter. Although, the, the, although those uh, shutters mm. are a fascinating issue. Yeah, I, I, I don't find it. Uh, I, the technical quality of the picture didn't, didn't even register with me. The, uh, the look of the culture, the architecture, uh, the bleakness, uh, without saying it covered in snow as, as you know, the cliche would be of Siberia, to me is very interesting. Really, really worth shooting. Well, that was the, uh, there were many things worth shooting and, and we recorded the pictures because we were fascinated and wanted to remember them. So that part went well. In, the, in uh, Siberia, for example, there were shutters on the windows, which you'd never see in Moscow or Leningrad or places like that. So there was a lot to learn. But what, through Photo Club, we've learned a lot of techniques. With modern photography, we have better equipment. So it's, uh, we learn a lot of things uh, that we now do in, in our pictures that we didn't know then. This is a picture of Ireland. This is the Cliffs of Moor. If you take a bus tour in Ireland, you're guaranteed to end up at the Cliffs of Moor. 30% of all the tour buses in the world, I think, are parked in this one <laughs> parking lot. Uh, and 
this, uh, we were there in the morning. When you're on a tour bus, you show up when they get you there, you don't choose your light. If Dave were gonna take a picture of the Cliffs of Moher, they're on the west coast of Ireland, he'd be there at sunset and get a beautiful picture uh, illuminating the, the cliffs. But we were there uh, in the morning, the light was coming from our left, the cliffs were not well illuminated. And as you, as you can see, there was a tourist or two in the foreground. So our challenge was how do we get a picture that we liked? So uh, we walked around some, looking back in the other direction with the sunlight on some of the other cliffs, uh, it was much better, still a lot of uh, extraneous things in the way. Sam found this picture because she was able to get flowers in it, so that's <laughs> what she did. And uh, Never mind the cliffs, just the flowers. <laughs> And I ended up with this picture. We managed to find a way to get the, the tourists out and the light was a little better in this direction. So that's what we came up with. And Dave calls this working the scene, um, looking at different perspectives and that's been helpful. And you have those nice flowers in the foreground. <laughs> yes, we like to get foreground, midground, and distance, but uh, this was the best we could do. There's, there were limited places you could walk, and, uh, but there were, there were many spots we could choose to photograph from, so we walked extensively to find what we were looking for. And actually, in I, th I thought the one where you, uh, there was just still a few tourists um, on the far right-hand side. However, the leading lines of the wall uh, to me made that a very, very interesting, very nice picture. And, and with a little bit of cropping, you could really remove a majority uh, mm -hmm. of the minority that's there mm -hmm. uh, and have a wonderful picture because I think the leading line in sidewalk that the wall goes is really very nice uh, in mm -hmm. relation to this. And actually the, the picture, uh, Tom, that you ended up with, uh, compositionally, there's a nice thing in that picture that because you have light, dark, light, dark, right. you, you're taken through the picture with that alternating dark and light, so. Okay. okay. Move. Um, another thing we've learned is that both of us um, like to take um, pictures on the fly, um, spontaneous things that we see and they're not planned. Um, we were walking along a wharf in Victoria on Vancouver Island and this little seal poked his head up and said hello so we took a picture of him. <laughs> this is an Anukshuk which is a sculpture at the top of Whistler Mountain in um, British Columbia. No we didn't climb up we came up on a trolley car um, but it was the symbol of the 2010 Olympics um, there in Whistler, um, these Chinese students just happened to be posing in front of it. Um, this cloudy day, you can see there is no blue sky in the background, but um, I just snapped that picture. And when I showed the picture to our grandsons, they decided to build their own Anukshuk um, at camp afterwards. Yeah. Move along. We were in uh, Israel and went to the Jordan River where people were getting baptized by the droves. And uh, we were looking for a place that had a good vantage point to show people uh, going through this experience from all over the world. There were many great diversity of people getting baptized. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, this, this picture compositionally is very nice because of, of the way the people lead you right down to the, the uh, minister that's in the water it's it's you know it works very nicely and that was one of uh, 200 pictures of the same subject <laughs> nobody sees what you don't show right okay <clears throat> this is the wailing wall on the right hand side in the center of jerusalem um just a plain old wall you see in the um the rabbis and other um jewish elders in there um, praying and reading scripture. Um, I didn't find that as interesting as the little toddler um, out in the courtyard um, chasing the pigeons. And so that's what I took a picture of. You also see the flag of Israel there. 
Okay. Again, walking through the streets of Jerusalem, these schoolgirls um, were just waiting for a bus and um, I asked if I might take their picture. I like to take pictures of people, but I try to ask permission first. It's a wonderful picture. It is. I like juxtapositions and humor, and uh, this was a picture of Nazareth, which is a, uh, we were on the uh, tour of Israel, which uh, we went to a number of biblical holy sites. So this is the holy site of Nazareth. And uh, <laughs> Uh, it was just a picture out out the bus window. This uh, it's not a great photograph, but uh, Cafe Holy Land seemed a bit uh, incongruous in, in Nazareth, and similarly in Bethlehem, Stars and Bucks Cafe, not Star. Oh, oh. I love this one. <laughs> so, and I wonder if they've heard from Starbucks in the preparation of their. Brand. Yeah, I don't know. This is in. Uh, this was on the West Bank in uh, Palestine, uh, Palestinian territory. Uh, at the Church of the Nativity uh, in Bethlehem, this is uh, the uh, the uh, presumed site of Jesus' birth. It's in a grotto underneath the the church. A gaudy and, church. A, yeah, and uh, people were waiting to go in at the beginning. This is the first group of tourists for the day to go into the. Uh, the holy site, and they were pushing and shoving, and there were thousands of people behind us. So it's that also seemed a bit incongruous with the the mad rush to get into what one would hope was a serene and holy site. <laughs> well captured. This is a scene at uh, in Italy, just, at uh, just outside Rome. Outside Rome, this is Gandalfo. This is the summer residence of the Pope. We had seen Pope Francis in Rome, and uh, we were on, in uh, Gandalfo, where there's a very lovely little village square just in front of this building. Uh, pope Benedict, uh, who had stepped down, was living here at the time, and we were talking to a family members of someone that worked in the residence, uh, who told us all about it, and. Uh, and she came out at the end of her shift at, uh, of work out the front door here. And Sam went up and uh, pretended to knock on the door, which I thought was amusing. So I got that picture. <laughs> and again, look at the bars on the windows of the Pope's place, the contrast. Yeah. We also like to take pictures of wildlife um, spontaneously. This, these mountain goats were high up um, on a cliff in British Columbia, and Tom with a telephoto was able to capture them. So what, what camera was that, Tom? We just have a little pocket uh, super zoom. Uh, it's a, uh, a Canon 700. I don't know how, how many, what, what the, the equivalent zoom length is, but they, they, were, um, they were essentially invisible uh, from where we were standing. And it was just a handheld. Uh, Super zoom. So the uh, the exposure wasn't great, but uh, we were happy to get a picture of them. And similarly, in this, uh, not far from there, this moose was swimming across a lake and came out. He also was so far away you could barely see him. She. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and this little guy is a two-toed sloth we saw at a rehabilitation center in Costa Rica. Um, and I just couldn't resist the little smile and in his eyes and his grin. So well, being our rehabilitation center was he originally a three-toed sloth. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the two. We saw three-toed sloths in the wild. But the sloths were way, way, way up high in the canopy of the trees, so it was difficult to um, get a picture of them. So this guy was close by. This is back in Israel. I told you we would jump around geographically. Um, looking over the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives, which is the um, sand colored at the top of the civilization there. Um, that sand colored are tombs 
um, the whole um, hillside was covered with these tombs and you have to pay a lot of money to be buried there on the hill. Well, and you can tell about that. This was uh, Caiaphas' house, and, uh, supposedly where Jesus, after being arrested, was taken there. Oh, really? And you can see, you can walk easily from um, Caiaphas's house across the Kedron Valley up to the Mount of Olives. We're all in close proximity, really. So there's no open area on, on Mount Olive and, and all, it's just all tombs now? Those are tombs, That's it's really not open. Yeah, you can't walk across the tomb area, but you can, there are a lot of uh, vantage points up on the top of the hill you reach from the other side. We're just saying in, the, in, in Jesus' time, you would have, these were all easily uh, close by sites. This, we, we really enjoyed Israel because of our Christian heritage. Um, and this is the Sea of Galilee taken from our hotel or our motel window patio um, at sunset. Um, we were surprised that the Sea of Galilee was as undeveloped as it is. Um, we are on the East Bank, which is the Golan Heights, and we were told that it's undeveloped because people have been shooting back and forth um, for 2,000 years. The Sea of Galilee is the only water source for the whole state of Israel, country of Israel fed by the Jordan River. This is the Dead Sea, significant part of uh, history in, uh, in Israel, and uh, that's Jordan on the other side. I, you know, I, when you put this one up, I saw it, I, you know, that you really get the idea that it's a Dead Sea. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, pretty, it's pretty salty. Sam went swimming in it, and uh, she floated high. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the salt around the edge of the coves. This was taken um, from the road on the way to Masada. It was very warm. So another site we took a picture of because of its religious significance in Italy. This is uh, Assisi. So one of the things, even uh, way back to in your early pictures from Russia and this one, one thing I I'll take note of on both those is is the uh, you you've got the vertical lines square with the side, so it's you know you, you're not getting the the typical keystoning. Keyst yeah, that's very good technique. Well, and also an anchoring foreground object is really really makes it uh, such an interesting picture as opposed to being in front of. Uh, the statue and seeing just the building. Yeah, right. you weren't squared uh, up with just the building. Yes, yeah, some... yeah, it's it's got dimension and again takes your eye through the picture. And this uh, this was uh, cropped a bit to square away the, some of the lines. This was in Israel. The uh, because it was a politically significant place. This is a a Jewish settlement in Palestine. Uh, in uh, Palestinian territory, and there were barbed wire fences all around it, and it was uh, something we've read about. We were curious to see what it looked like. And bars on the windows. Hmm. This was an arrest stop on the highway um, coming from the north to the south. Um, it was an oasis, and we stopped there for lunch you could, there were camels off to the right that you could have a ride on if you wanted. But what struck me was these um, Israeli soldiers who were there with their machine guns just to keep the peace, I guess, if there was any trouble, because this was still um, in the West Bank. Um, yeah, they were not as visible in Israel, but on the West Bank, they were all over the place. And you, you asked, to, Sam, you asked to take their picture? I did ask to take their picture, yes. Sam's the one that gets all the pictures of people who you have to ask permission to, uh, because she's the one with the social skills. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. 
I take the picture of the buildings. <clears throat> well, we were, I like the I like the body language uh, of the young man uh, to the left. Mm -hmm. You know, where you had relaxed him with your conversation. Uh, and she didn't get shot, which was a good thing. Well, these are some. Yeah, of the I was amazed on, on a trip to uh, Cairo. The same thing. How, how many automatic weapons that I saw, you know, on the streets on a daily basis, and then people getting off a bus. Uh, I guess it, it would be similar to our National Guard, where someone got up in the morning in Egypt, put on their uniform, got on the bus, and then went to an anti-aircraft site on a corner and went to work. Oh, okay. Sat down in the turret and, and put in his eight hours. Uh, we don't realize how lucky we are. Well, we went to Bouchard Gardens in uh, Victoria because there are flowers everywhere. But Sam and I look at this uh, somewhat differently. This was my picture, looking more at the overall overview and structure of the garden. And I like close-ups. Sam <laughs> likes flowers. We also like to how things work as one of the things I like to take pictures of. We're, go, we're moving now into things that I prefer and then, then things that Sam prefers. And uh, this was Machu Picchu. You've seen all the classic pictures of Machu Picchu. This is the temple there. I was interested in the construction techniques. <clears throat> when they do uh, all of Machu Picchu was uh, mortar free stonework. And uh, when they, but when they do temples, they make very fine joints Everything is fit very close together. There are no two stones alike, but they fit exactly. And they've survived centuries of earthquakes. And it was very interesting. Hmm. In Panama, we uh, got lesson after lesson about how the Panama Canal works. It is an engineering marvel. There are no pumps. Everything works by gravity. And we have many pictures showing how things work. But this was an amusing picture to me because the way they hook up the cable to the, from the boat to the mechanical devices that guide the boat through the canal is two guys in a rowboat, which was not very high tech. In Ireland, we had lessons on how sheepdogs work. Uh, this sheepdog has a, the, fero uh, the particular glare that uh, gets the attention of the sheep. Apparently, sheepdogs uh, have that wired in, and uh, they age out. So at some point in their lives, uh, they lose interest in, uh, in herding sheep, and then they don't, they don't do it anymore. And they retire. Uh, I like taking pictures of scenes. We worked this scene to get a vantage point of this village, which we mostly walked around the middle of. And uh, I, I took this picture with an iPhone, rested it on a, uh, a, a handrail to steady it. And the village is where? This is in uh, Cinque Terre in uh, Northwestern Italy. Yeah, the, I've been there. That's why I asked. I thought I recognized coast the, it. Uh, the coast of the Monte Mediterranean. Monte Manarola, I believe. Manarola, OK. This is Burano, uh, an island uh, near Venice. Uh, similarly, we were, look, we were taken with the colors and the People get around. I thought it interesting when you go from Venice to this island by boat, where you make the turn to come into here is Elton John's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we, which, we were which they pointed out both ways, going and coming. I thought, well, I'm sure he still owns it. It's only been an afternoon. In Bethlehem, was waiting for the bus with her two little, three little children. And I asked her if I could pick. This fellow um, was playing the flute in Panama. Um, he's on an island in the Chagres River, um, which is part of the canal. Um, he's of the Embera tribe. Um, the people, and we didn't show you the thatched houses and the kids running around with not much on, um, but they live as they lived thousands of years ago. This lady was our waitress in um, Peru. Um, and she's in native dress and serving us lunch that day. That's a guinea pig for lunch <laughs> on her tray. 
It didn't look like he was interested in becoming lunch either by the expression on his face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But her son was out back playing with oh. the cat. Um, and so as we walked around the compound of the restaurant afterwards, I was enthralled by this little imp. Well, it's a wonderful, great. wonderful picture. Yeah, right. You got a good expression. And um, we climbed the Andes, or when we, we flew over the Andes, um, this was a, um, we're up to 14,000 feet. Um, and this woman and her granddaughter were walking along the side with their llamas. Very colorful. And then this is my concluding one. Um, in a hotel in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Londonderry, um, a family was having a, a first communion, really a gala event. And this was the little girl who was being honored for her first communion. I thought her hair was beautiful and she was running around in the lobby with her friends. And then when I asked her mother if I could take her picture, she put on this very serene expression. Yeah. That's that's one of my favorite pictures of, of yours. Yeah, your children's portraits are very compelling. Yeah. And that's what we have. Well, what I love is the, the mix and, and the concept that each of you look at things differently. And so when you get back with your pictures, you have a, a wonderful uh, remember it's uh, where other people I think can relate to it if they tend to like the kind of pictures that Sam wants to take or the kind that Tom wants to take. We can separate the engineers from the regular people. You know? Right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Sam and Tom, we appreciate very much you sharing the pictures with us and, and kind of how you approach it. Uh, I think when you we first started talking about this, you I think one of the things you pointed out is you, you're trying to share your, your, your memories. You're not necessarily coming back to have a big slideshow, the old uh, Kodak slideshow. And, and now here's, here we are here and here. So, but it, but it ends up being great pictures. Yeah, we usually have some that are pretty good, but yeah. mostly for our purposes. Okay. Well, and that's, that's what you take them for. So they are for your purposes. And the fact that we now have a club and can share, I think they become other people's inspiration, uh, which I think is good, personally. I think I, my personal kind of feeling is, is you, you shoot pictures for yourself first, and then if other people like it, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. Right. And if they don't, then they have bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. We did learn a lot from the others in the group, though. As, as have we all, I think. Well, we thank you very much. And uh, I thank think you. it goes off for now. And 